Hey guys, David here from TechOp.io, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to install Ubuntu in VirtualBox. This video assumes that you've already installed VirtualBox. If you haven't already, you can download VirtualBox from the official link that I'll leave in the description down below. The first thing that you'll want to do is download the Ubuntu installation media. You can do this by going to ubuntu.com download. And we're going to be downloading Ubuntu Desktop. So I'm going to click this button here, Download Ubuntu Desktop. And by default, it's going to prompt you to download the current long-term support version of Ubuntu. As of making this video, this is Ubuntu 24.04 LTS that I'm going to be installing. However, the steps are pretty much the same for any version of Ubuntu Desktop. Unless you're a developer, though, you most likely want to go with the most recent Ubuntu LTS version, which is what's at the top of the page here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click Download. And give it a second, but you should see it starts downloading the Ubuntu desktop ISO. Now, depending on the speed of your internet connection, this may take a few minutes, so just be patient and I'll come back once this is done. All right, now that the ISO is done downloading, we can go ahead and open up VirtualBox. And we're going to create a new VirtualBox virtual machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and click new. And I'm going to name this Ubuntu desktop. And you'll want to click this drop down beside ISO image, and you'll want to click other. And from here, you'll want to browse to your downloads folder or to wherever else you save the ISO image. And you'll want to select the Ubuntu desktop ISO image that you downloaded and we'll click open. And it should auto detect the type as Ubuntu 64 bit. However, if it doesn't, you'll want to select type Linux in this menu here, subtype Ubuntu, and then version either the 64 or the 32-bit version, depending which one you're installing. If you're not sure, it's most likely the 64-bit version, especially if you just downloaded the ISO. I'm going to click Skip Unattended Installation so that we can use the default Ubuntu installer to configure this virtual machine. And I'll also want to configure the hardware for the virtual machine. As of making this video, Ubuntu Desktop has a minimum memory requirement of 4 gigabytes, so I'm just going to change this to 4096 MB which is essentially four gigabytes. And it also requires a minimum of two CPU cores. I'm going to assign four in this case. As for the hard disk, it requires a minimum of 25 gigabytes, which is what's selected by default. So I'm just going to leave that at the default for now. And I'll click finish. And now we can go ahead and start the virtual machine. And we should see the virtual machine boot to the boot menu for the installer. So I'm just going to select try or install Ubuntu. And I'll hit enter on my keyboard. And just give it a second, but you should see the Ubuntu boot screen. All right, now the Ubuntu installer is loading. I'll just give it a minute here. And we can see the beginning of the Ubuntu installer. So we can choose our language. I'll just leave it on English and I'll click next. You can configure the accessibility settings if you'd like. I'm just going to leave all of these on default and I'll click next. And I'm using a US keyboard, so I'll keep this on the default and click next. But if you're using a different keyboard layout, make sure to select your keyboard layout. And since we're in VirtualBox, we won't see any Wi-Fi devices. We'll just keep this on use a wired connection and click next. And I'm getting this message here that an update is available for the installer. I'm going to go ahead and update this now so I get the most recent version of the installer. But you can choose to skip this if you'd like. If you choose to go through with the installer update like I did, you'll get this here to close the installer. And you'll need to reopen the installer manually with this icon here on the desktop. So I'll just double click that. And we can see that the installer reopens. I'll just go back to where we left off and I'll come back once I'm there. All right, so I'm back on the connect to the internet screen. I'll just leave this on use a wired connection again and I'll click next. And then we're asked if we want to use interactive installation or an automated installation. If you're not sure, you're going to want to leave it on the default here, interactive installation, and click next. And it's going to ask what apps you'd like to install to start with. I'm just going to leave it on default selection and click next. And I'm going to leave this box up here unchecked, install third-party software for graphics and Wi-Fi hardware since we're in VirtualBox. But I am going to check off this box here, download and install support for additional media formats. This is included, but not limited to MP3, MP4, MOV, and similar. So I'm going to check this box here and I'll click next. And since this is its own machine in VirtualBox, we can leave this on erase disk and install Ubuntu and just click next. And now it's gonna prompt you to create a username, password, and assign a host name to the computer. So I'm just gonna go ahead and type these in and I'll come back once I'm done. 
All right, so I've assigned the computer a name of Ubuntu VM, and I've assigned my username of David. And I'm going to keep this box checked here, require my password to log in, and I'll click Next. And it's auto-detected that I'm in the Toronto time zone. However, if this isn't correct for you, you can manually select your time zone from the drop-downs up here, and I'll click Next. And finally, we get a summary of what's going to happen. So it's going to use the whole hard disk to install Ubuntu. And I'm going to go ahead and click Install. And we'll see that it started to copy the files to the virtual machine. Now, this can take several minutes. So just be patient. And if at any point in time you'd like to see a more advanced detail view, you can click this icon down here. And it'll show you exactly what's happening with the installation in real time. So I'm just going to leave this open because I like to see a more advanced view of what's happening. Now, this is probably going to take about 10 to 15 minutes for me, so I'll come back once this is done. All right, and finally, after several minutes, we get this message here that Ubuntu is installed and ready to use. So I'll just click Restart Now. And the computer will go to Restart. You'll see this message here. Please remove the installation medium, then press Enter. It looks like the Ubuntu installer actually ejected the installation media by itself, as we can tell by the grayed out icon down here in VirtualBox. However, if your CD-ROM drive icon down here isn't grayed out, you'll want to right click it and click Remove Disk from Virtual Device. I'll just click back inside here and I'll hit Enter on my keyboard. And the virtual machine will reboot and we'll see that Ubuntu is loading. All right, and we can see that we're greeted by the Ubuntu login screen here. So I'll just click my username and I'll enter my password. And you can see here that I'm on the Ubuntu desktop and I get this welcome screen. So it says complete your setup with additional settings and we'll have you up and running in no time. So I'll just click next up here. And it's going to ask you if you want to enable Ubuntu Pro. I'm just going to skip for now. So I'm going to click skip. And it's going to ask if you want to share system data with the Ubuntu team. I'm just going to click No, and I'll click Next. And if you want, you can open App Center to install some more applications. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm just going to click Finish. Now, the last thing that we should do is install the VirtualBox Guest Editions so that we get proper display support and that our virtual machine resizes with the size of the virtual machine window, as well as to enable some other functionality, such as shared clipboard. So to install VirtualBox Guest Editions in this virtual machine, I'm going to go up here to Devices, and I'm going to click Insert Guest Editions CD Image. Now you may get this message here that it could not find the VirtualBox Guest Editions disk image file. I'll just click Download. And I'll confirm by clicking Download again. And I'll just click Continue. So the first thing that we need to do to install VirtualBox Guest Editions is install the bzip2 and tar libraries, because if we don't, the Guest Editions installation will fail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click the menu down here to show apps, and I'm going to open up a terminal window, and I'm going to type sudo space apt space update, and I'll hit enter. And it's going to ask me for my password. I'll type that in and hit enter. And this just refreshes the list of available software. So to install the two libraries that we need, I'll just type in sudo space apt space install space bzip2 space tar, and I'll hit enter. And I'll just hit enter again to continue. And once that's done, I can close this terminal window here. And we can see this CD icon here, which is our VirtualBox Guest Edition CD. I'm going to open that. And we get this message up here that says it contains software to run. I'll just go over here and I'll click Run Software. And I'll just click Run on the confirmation message that pops up. And it's going to ask me for my password. I'll just type that in and I'll click Authenticate. And I'll just give this a minute here, but it should install the VirtualBox Guest Editions. All right, and we can see that the virtual machine resized itself, which is a side effect of installing the Guest Editions. And we get this message here, press return to close this window. So I'll just hit enter on my keyboard. And the final thing we should do after installing the guest editions is restart the virtual machine to make sure that everything is loaded. So I'll go up to the power icon up here and I'll click power and I'll just click restart. And I'll confirm by clicking restart. 
And we can see the virtual machine restarting. Okay, and I'm at the login screen again. Now, if I resize the virtual machine, we can see that the contents inside the virtual machine also resizes now. So that's how we know we installed the VirtualBox guest edition successfully. And now if I go ahead and log in here, we can see that we have Ubuntu fully working in our Ubuntu virtual machine here. And I can resize it as I wish. So we've just successfully installed Ubuntu inside of a VirtualBox virtual machine and everything is working correctly. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more. And don't forget to check out my website at www.techop.io. And if there's anything you'd like to see, let me know in the comments down below.